Good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Janitzi Velez, and I'm happy to welcome each one of you. Uh, this is our community briefing, and it's recorded. So I want to make sure that you are aware that um, this information um, is being recorded uh, while we are being gathered here today. The Community of Color Nonprofit Stabilization Fund a Community Briefing aims to um, explain the details of this fund. I'm the New England Regional Director at Hispanic Federation based out of the Connecticut State Office. Hispanic Federation is the nation's premier Latino nonprofit membership organization founded in 1990. HF seeks to strengthen the Hispanic community, support Hispanic families, and strengthen Latinos institutions through the work in the areas of education, civic engagement, health, economic empowerment, and the environment. If you want to know more about our organization and the work that we do, please visit our website, www.hispanicfederation.org. Today, we will be discussing the details about the fund opportunity, the grant application process, and we'll answer all questions at the end of the briefing. And for that, I'm joined by the incredible team and colleagues who will introduce themselves now um, and will be faces and the voices uh, when hopefully you will be in contact in, future, in the future. Almirka? Oh, good morning. Thank you, Janitzi. Uh, my name is Almirka Santiago, and I'm the Assistant Vice President for Grants and Capacity Building. A welcome to all of you, and we're super excited for this new year. Um, next, Fernando. Thanks, Admika. Good morning, everyone. I'm Fernando Aguilar. I'm the Director for Contracts and Grants at uh, here at HF. I'm also the point person for the New York City CCMSF Fund in New York City, which is now going on its ninth year. So I'm going to add some info here and there throughout this uh, morning's presentation. Thanks. Canela? Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Canela Torres. I'm the grants manager here at Hispanic Federation and also so excited um, to be working on this initiative and to meet all of you. Uh, Selena? Good morning, everyone. My name is Selena Marte and I work for the Connecticut office. I'm the program coordinator and I'm happy to be here and to uh, share information about this really incredible grant with you guys. So welcome. Thank you, team, and thank you to each one of you that has joined, and I will see that we are um, being joined by other folks. So for those who were not at the beginning, please know that um, this virtual meeting is being recorded and will be published. We also encourage you to write in the chat any question, any uh, comments, the name of your organization, yourself introduced in the chat, and we will go over those comments and questions at the end of the briefing once again. Um, Selena uh, will be monitoring the chat and we'll be, um, she will make sure that uh, we answer every question. With that said, uh, let's start with a little bit of history. In 2014, the Hispanic Federation, along with three community partners, formed the Alliance to provide capacity building support to Black, Latino, and Asian-led communities-based organizations through the New York City. As Fernando mentioned, he has been working on this project for over nine years. This pilot program named the Community of Colors Nonprofit Stabilization Fund was designed to help the strength community-based organizations since the inception. And it has helped close to 500 capacity building projects for nonprofit organizations. Last year, the Hispanic Federation partnered with the, Hispanic, uh, with the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving to develop the capacity building program through the greater Hartford region. As a result, the Hartford Foundation allocated funds to establish the first ever Connecticut Community of Color Association Fund. And we are glad to announce that once again, this year we are able to launch this fund opportunity for organizations that are within the greater Hartford area. After a competitive review process, 15 organizations in 2021, from across the region, received grants awards ranging from the $25,000 up to $55,000. This resulted in an amount close to $600,000 in capacity building grants awards. However, the grant investment were also combined with over 400 hours of combined individual technical support and group professional development and capacity building trainings. You can see the organizations that were funded by visiting 
our uh, microsite, a Connecticut Community of Color Nonprofit Stabilization Fund, or very well known, uh, www.ctccnsf.org. And Selena will be adding that link on the chat. Now, what is the main purpose of this uh, grant? Uh, pretty much is to really work around the necessity of our local nonprofit organizations and to build the capacity of these organizations that are serving the majority Latino, Asian, Indigenous, and Black communities in recognition of the fact that the organizations led by people of the community are best equipped to meet the needs of their clients. Also, to promote collaborative learning among community-based organizations. Eligible nonprofit organizations um, like yourself, hopefully, can apply for this grant. There is a level of criteria that we are using for this purpose. Number one, they must be registered as a 501c3 for at least three years. Must be a current registration with the Connecticut State Department of Consumer Protection Charities Unit. Must be also a Connecticut-based direct social human services organization serving residents in the greater Hartford region. It cannot be an association, a club, or a granting or referral service organization. Their experience currently serving communities with at least 51% of people of color. Must be led by a chief executive officer who is Hispanic, Indigenous, African American, or Asian Pacific American, and or is governed by a board with a majority of members who are Hispanic, Indigenous, African American, or Asian Pacific American. These organizations um, who um, meet all these criteria must have an operating budget of at least $150,000 or a maximum of $2 million. Also must present a commitment to equal employment opportunity. Finally, demonstrate a commitment to racial equity and addressing the structure of barriers that limit opportunity for people of color. Demonstrate a commitment and capacity to, devil, to deliver cultural competent services, meeting the social, cultural, and linguistic needs of the community they serve. And please know that these organizations um, must not uh, utilize a fiscal sponsor or must be our conduit, our, or conduit organizations uh, are not eligible for this grant in particular. Once again, you can place all the questions that you may have any concern or any comment on our chat, we want to encourage you to do that as we will address those questions at the end of the presentation. For information more about the request for application on the Earth II, which was actually launched on July 1st, we will have Canela, who will help us uh, to talk about the details of this um, application process. It's a very friendly user platform that we are using and we are happy to launch it for the very first time. Canela, please share a little bit of more details of that application process. Yes, thank you, Yanitsi. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and take you all through uh, what the application will look like on your end. Oh, um, Yanitsi, would you mind uh, stopping screen sharing? Yep. Thanks. Thank you. So, this is what the CTCCNSF website looks like that Selena linked in the chat. And if you scroll down, you can see here a button that tells you where to apply. And this will take you to our application portal. So you'll be prompted to create a login. And then, then once you have an account, um, you will be required to submit your organization's EIN. And that will take you to the eligibility questions. So uh, a lot of the eligibility criteria or all of it is detailed in the RFA. Um, and it's also what Yanitsi just went over. So these questions are just to make sure that the organization that you're applying for is eligible for this grant. So once you've filled out the eligibility quiz, you will be able to see the application here are so, here's some general overview information um, that just goes over the documents and that sort of thing that you'll need to complete the application. 
Uh, what's great about this platform is that you can actually see all parts of the application. Um, you don't have to complete one before you move on to the next section. And then here are some general tips for completing the form, which will also come up at the end. So we first ask for general information about your organization, including contact information um, and about the organization's budget. We also ask if you have been a previous recipient of CTCC NSF uh, funding, which is fine, as long as you are not applying for the same funding category. We also ask uh, questions, obviously, about our evaluation criteria. These are the long form questions, and you can see that there is a word count for these and also a spell check function. We'll also ask about uh, your project specifically and your budget. Uh, Fernando will actually be going over in more detail the budget uh, requirements that we have for this application. And uh, we also ask that you have selected your consultant or consultants before you apply. You are required to have at least one consultant, but we have space for up to three consultants on the application. And the last section is the attachment section. So here you'll be able to choose files, <clears throat> excuse me, and then um, you'll actually have to click the upload button to make sure that they are um, attached to the application. You'll also be able to um, review your application before you submit it, and it will tell you if you're missing any sections. Since this is a blank application, it tells me that I'm missing almost everything or everything. So um, if you're missing anything, you'll be able to see that here. You're also able to download a printer-friendly version uh, for your records. So um, it's always useful to have a record of the applications that you submit, and you can do that here. So that's the overview of the application, and I will hand it back to Yanitsi. Thank you, Skalena, and we hope that you can visit our microship, um, microsite um, uh, so you can look into the sample of this application. And more important, you know, like you can review all the documents that are going to be requested in order for you to apply. I will have now, uh, before I go into the details of what are the documents that are going to be required, I um, want to bring on Mirka Santiago, um, who joined us today for a short period of time, but have great information about our commitment on this grant and the application process. Anmika? Thank you, Janitsi. Um, <clears throat> so again, we are ecstatic to have this initiative for <clears throat> a second year uh, now in, in the greater Hartford area and are committed to, of course, continuing to support organizations even beyond this time. We are working to streamline this process, as Janity mentioned, that is where our wonderful Blackboard system comes in. So if you have any questions, um, encounter any issues with it, please feel free to reach out to Canela. Canela is our expert with the system, uh, creating the applications and really helping us uh, go through this uh, portal where you'll be able to find all the information you need moving forward about the initiative, uh, the application you submitted, you'll have a copy immediately. We'll be able to keep track of deliverables, um, and really just like help us create the narrative to further um, fundraise for capacity building in not only Greater Hartford, right? Now we want to make sure that we go beyond the borders of Hartford and, and ensure that the state of Connecticut and then expand to the entire New England region to support uh, these types of initiatives, to support your organizations um, and make sure that these dollars that are not easy to obtain uh, become accessible to you. Thank you, Armilka, and I appreciate your time. And also, uh, she is, I, I said it, she is the brain behind all this effort, but really is that collaborative um, and a team that is there for you um, to make sure that you feel comfortable in submitting the application. And later on, this same team will be the one who will support you throughout the project implementation. Thank you once again, Armilka. She will stay around for a couple more minutes. But meanwhile, we want to continue to discuss um, the process of the request for the application. So once you get access to the sample of the application in our microsite, you can also gather the, uh, the, the documentations ahead of time so you can prepare accordingly. 
part of that is um, making sure that you have, um, including uh, the budget and narratives uh, for the budget, a list of the board of the directors, officers, and affiliation, key program staff resumes updated, most recent financial audits. If consultants are used, that which most of the our applications um, really have this portion, you must submit a consultant resume and description of consultant qualification within the application. Description of the proposed consultant qualification, IRS determination letter, proof of the registration with the Connecticut State Department of Consumer Protection Charity Unit, which normally is a certificate, and also the organization budget for the current fiscal year. Now, in order for us to identify what are the projects that you would like to apply, I will bring Fernando. Fernando is an expert on this, and uh, he has um, gone through a length of work with many organizations to discover and implement uh, new projects. We have seven categories, and we will go by each one, and he will provide us with a sample uh, on each category. Fernando, welcome. Thanks, Janitzi. Um, really, you folks are the experts. Um, your consultants, hopefully, are, are really the experts. Um, and that's why you're bringing them in to help you with um, these categories, whatever category you're applying under. Um, you know, the first category, management information systems, design and development. Uh, and, and as Canela mentioned, you, you can only apply for, for one under one category. Um, um, Sorry, you can only be funded under one category uh, any, at any given year. So you can't repeat a category. So just kind of be careful um, or, you know, uh, on, on just making sure that your project fits under that category. Because you, if you're funded, you won't be able to go back to that category. Uh, management info, designs and development. I've seen organizations um, increase their technology infrastructure. I've seen um, updating systems. Um, it, you know, maybe they they're working from an antiquated, um, you know, um, computer system, and they've wanted to uh, get caught up into this decade, and so they've they've hired a consultant, brought in a consultant um, to uh, update those those functionalities. I've seen um, telephone and communication systems updated through this category. Um, I've seen organizations. Um, automating systems through this category and you know uh, organizations that have been using handwritten spreadsheets or handwritten reports bringing a consultant in to get them trained up in a in a in a simple but more effective uh, tracking system next to uh, Janitia, I guess I'll just take them through each category the next is financial management and planning category I've seen um, smaller organizations use this category to go from again from ex, uh, Excel documents um, to to um, then bring in an expert bring in a consultant to get them trained in QuickBooks um, you know purchasing the software through this grant and then bringing in that expert to train their um, their finance department in quick or you know finance person in in QuickBooks, um, any platform like that. And again, the, these are just some examples, but you can you know you it's up to you to um, to propose what would work for your organization and and within any given category. I've also seen an organization use this to um, create a um, medical Medicaid billing system. They were um, they were an organization that did testing and um, and had only worked with insurance uh, previously and um, were able to use this category to then um, allow them to build to Medicaid. Evaluations and outcome system development. I've seen CRM systems created through this uh, through this category, tracking systems, for your outcomes, for your services provided, um, organizations that are perhaps using, again, a, 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 an antiquated tracking system, they've um, brought in an expert to get them, after they've really figured out what they do need to start re reporting on and what outcomes they do need to um, that are significant to their funders and their, you know, constituents and their board, um, then really 
some um, internet issues, so apologies there. Um, the next category is leadership development. This is a very broad category. I've seen um, many things um, funded under this category. Um, experts brought in for board development to increase uh, board members, uh, governance. Um, this category I've seen used for succession planning. I've seen it um, as a way for an organization to create um, a pipeline for employees that they need to hire. Um, so a consultant comes in and, and, um, and, and provides them with a roadmap and how they will get to that end goal of getting those employees that they need to hire. Um, <clears throat> next category is uh, new program planning and development. I've seen um, some great projects here. Um, this is, you know, again, broad and, 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 and can really um, help, you know, um, define further what your organization um, hopes to achieve service-wise. I've seen um, a, uh, an example is I've seen um, a small business entrepreneurship um, organization, local CBO um, that wanted to then create a um, small business lending department within that, um, you know, within their technical assistance. Um, and they brought in a consultant to become a um, certified development financial institution. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, strategy and organizational development, again, another broad category, but, you know, again, be careful because if you are funded, um, can't go back to this category. Um, and being that it's broad, it, it really is, is a category that um, people uh, tend to apply under. Um, I've seen this for um, three-year strategic plans, five-year strategic plans, um, roadmaps for um, fundraising, um, diversifying funding opportunities, I've seen this category used for communications, social media, marketing, all of those, um, uh, all of those kind of um, uh, points of of, um, of necessity for your organization. Um, I've seen that this category utilized for, <clears throat> for those. Uh, last but not least, collaboration and strategic alliances. Great example this year, um, I had a, uh, we had a, um, a Latinx Sorry, we having internet um, issues, but uh, I'm sure that Fernando Okay, here he goes. Fernando, continue. Sorry about that. It's having some internet okay. issues. Um, yep, I, Latinx uh, theater company had been around for decades. Had they uh, brought in a consultant to bring together about six of the other um, stalwart Latinx um, theater companies together. And um, it was a fantastic proposal. Um, you know, it was a way to bring these um, this you know niche community of theaters together to um, then have a better um, uh, grasp and have a better um, have better advocacy and policy um, for those um, for those niche group niche groups here in New York City. So thank you, Yanitzi. Take it take it away. Thank you, Fernando. And part of this is the reason why we took the time to go and give you a couple of ideas is because um, this is really, you know, within the each category of uh, projects that we um, award funds, it is important that you understand that and we want to meet the needs of your organizations. So um, it is important that if you are applying for another year, um, if you applied last year for the first time, uh, that you select another type of project um, on this application. In addition to that, if you are applying for the first time, think about what are the priorities? What are the projects that have the priority and the most present need at your organization? Um, this is important because if you see that there are different type of projects that you would like to apply for, um, really you have to narrow it only to one. So um, have that conversation. That's why we are having these community briefings uh, so you can gather with your board, with your senior staff, 
you do a brainstorm session around what are the priorities and what would you like to apply? And if you have any further question and we can help you uh, or assist you in that process, we will be more than happy to do so. Now, keep in mind that every application um, it will have a request uh, cap um, depending on the organization budget. So requests up to $35,000 is only for those organizations that have a budget between $150,000 and $500,000. A request for up to $45,000 if organization's budget is above $501 can certainly apply for that. In addition, we want to make sure that um, we collaborate with you somehow or facilitate the process of reviewing and varying um, the process. So we are giving you the details around how we do this. We get together with allocation committee um, that is selected um, and is um, formed by the staff members of the Hispanic Federation and other experts in the community who join forts and volunteer time to review these applications. Now, nonprofit applicants, uh, we look into whether they are active in Guide Start um, and make sure that they are in the IRS database. Uh, we review the proposed use of funds to ensure that monies are not used in a prohibited manner. Connecticut State Department of Consumer Protection Charities, we're looking to that certificate, it's up to date. And also we're looking to the details of those proposed consultants, whether those consultants are within uh, registered within uh, the Connecticut State Department of Consumer Protection, they have any um, lengthy resume, what is your experience? Uh, we're looking to social media, of course, um, and anything that help us uh, to really vet those consultants. Now, with that said, I also want to bring once again, Fernando, um, because this is a very interesting process uh, where we are willing and able to really uh, work with each one of you. Um, of course, we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable with the person that you are considering to hire. Um, to work with you on uh, the project that you uh, submit the application for. Um, but again, there is a process. Uh, so, Fernando? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, so, so we, we know that uh, programmatics, pro, programmatic grants e exist you know, throughout, throughout our states and, and throughout you know, federally. Um, but these capacity building grants um, are few and far between. And, and we really feel that this is a, a special opportunity. Um, and with that, you know, it, it, it's a way for the organization to discover new skills um, and we, with that, you know, we rely on um, an expert or, you know, a consultant to do that. Um, you know, uh, you know, many of you orgs have, have worked with a consultant or prior or have been given a referral to one, and that's great. Continue, you know, um, working with that consultant. Um, we want you to um, you know, write that consultant into your proposal. Um, you know, whoever is, is best for your organization, we want you to work with. However, we do urge you to do your due diligence where the choosing of your consultant is concerned, um, consultant or again, expert, either, either one is interchangeable. We will also look to make sure that your consultant does not fall under any of these categories here on the PowerPoint. Um, I'm not going to go through them, you know, each, you know, line by line, but um, they can't be an employee or receive a salary from your org. We don't want to see that they have their own company email um, from your respective organization. That's a red flag for us. The consultant can't be connected to the org other than having worked as a consultant to your org prior. Um, we don't want a conflict of interest anywhere. Okay. Um, and that goes for your board too. The consultant can't be a board member. Um, we aren't the only ones who look at these. Um, you know, we answer to our funders, and um, they also scrutinize these documents. Um, uh, we will, we will, of course, have an allocations committee reviewing your proposals, and they'll also look at re red flags such as these. So, when doing your due diligence, you know, um, what we do is we do a simple Google search. We check um, their social media mm -hmm. handle. Um, in some cases, we do a LexisNexis search, uh, GuideStar search. 
Um, and, uh, you know, just to make sure, again, there isn't any um, uh, red flags uh, for your consultant. We wouldn't want any um, issues coming up um, and we want you to succeed. Um, so do do your due diligence. We will do so on our side as well. Um, and uh, last thing I will mention is that if you um, have not picked out a consultant, this year we are requiring that you submit your consultant with your application. Um, that can be, again, you know, if you're not sure ex on the, if you haven't identified this specific consultant, but maybe you've identified three and are, are um, yet to choose one, then, you know, put those on to the proposal, put those three on the proposal or two onto the proposal. Um, you'll have some time to actually identify the, um, the exact consultant, but we want to see that you're writing your consultants in um, on the application or your consultant into the application. If for some reason you don't have anywhere to start with um, where to find this expert, where to find this consultant. Um, we do have a list that you can email us um, requesting. You can email Genitsi or Selena um, requesting a list of consultants we've seen used in the past. These, This is not in any way an endorsement for any of the consultants on the list, but um, just again, consultants that we've seen um, used on past projects for um, the CCNSF New York City Fund and the CTCCNSF, obviously Connecticut Fund. So thanks. Back to you, Nianitz. Thank you, Fernando. And again, um, it, it is important that by um, when you submit the application, you do submit the full contact information of those consultants because those are the ones that we're going to vet and we're going to consider for your application. This doesn't mean that you have to get an agreement with them ahead of time. This doesn't mean that you have to do an MOU. What it means is that you have a conversation, you have that um, set of understanding of what is the project that you're applying for um, and what it will be their role, what it will be the cost. So you can consider all those elements into the application and the budget and the budget narrative. Thank you, Fernando, for that information. Now we continue with the process as we want to make sure that um, you have all the details specifically around um, our uh, resources and also the timelines. I'm gonna share with you now, um, let me see right here, part of the application uh, process. Um, it's also with the uh, budget. Um, the budget, it is important because we have some caps for each one of those uh, categories, and we want to make sure that you are aware of those. Um, again, all of this information is available in our microsite, um, the www.ctccnfs.org. Um, also, uh, you will receive a copy of this presentation, and this uh, recording will be published. Um, not only in our microsite, but also social media and other um, networks that we have available. So going back to the budget, um, we want to make sure that you take in consideration that salary expenses do not exceed 35% of the project proposed budget. Um, also, the fringe benefits, um, just so you know, they are capped up to the 15% of the salary expenses line. And consultants for non -prof for profit or nonprofit are capped at the 60 of process uh, pr proposed budget. And this is magnificent because really I was having a conversation with Fernando and Canela and America. And really, we don't see this very often. This is why it's a very unique grant opportunity for those local nonprofit organizations. Um, we really provide a maximum amount uh, for consultants. Um, in addition to that, uh, computer hardware and software expenses are capped to 30% of the proposed budget, and the capital or overhead expenses are capped to 10% of the proposed budget, which is normal a standard procedure or a standard cap. Fernando, would you like to add any information here? 
so much. No, that's that's I great, Genesee. Um, the, the, I do you think you uh, hit you know hit it. it? It's um is very straightforward and simple budget. You know, there's the, just the five categories that you're going to break down your either you know your your um, your ask your you know your requested um, uh, proposed amount on, and just make sure that you don't go over any of those caps for each. And Genesee um, specifically mentioned those. Uh, you know, just to highlight um, the fringe cap at 15 uh 15% is 15% of the salary line so every other line is um the percent every other category it's based on the proposed budget overall proposed budget and what fernando was mentioning is that as specifically the fringe benefits it's uh, within the category or the allocation of the salary expense in line so there is a different view. But if you, you have any further questions, you're welcome. Uh, we will be more than happy to answer those. No worries, Fernando. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about the timeline. Uh, so we know that the request application was released on July 1st. Also, that the deadline for application submission is August 19, 2022 this year five o'clock so put that on your calendars make sure that you make a note to yourself please don't wait until the very last minute um we uh we know that we are expecting a lot of applications so we will appreciate if you can get this information um you know up and running in your organization and apply as soon as possible also uh please note that the grant awards will be announced during the week of the september 29th of this year. Um, this project, um, it's a six month length project. Um, so it is to start on October 1st. We will be providing the first check, um, which is a 50% in advance of this grant um, before that diet. Uh, so it's important that you help us to get all the information, complete applications, um, and again, I cannot um, express more than it is important that you submit a full application. Incomplete application will not be reviewed and will not be considered. So please, please, please make sure that you check twice before it submits. Um, the launch of capacity building workshops, as we mentioned early on, um, this is not only about providing funding opportunities, and technical assistance, but really leadership development. And it's to facilitate the collaboration amongst their grantees. We will start uh, with the calendar of building workshops officially in October 1st, but please note that if at any moment you want to be part of our Entre Familia workshops, capacity building and leadership development um, trainings, a weekly or monthly basis, uh, go and uh, look into our website. We have a calendar of all upcoming workshops. And also you can visit our Hispanic Federation website. Mid-contract programs report are due on February 10th. And before that, we will have an orientation uh, for all the awardees. So we will go over the details of how to submit a mid-contract process, um, and more important, uh, to go over the progress of your project. Services delivery, funds expended by March 31st of the next year. So between February 10th and March 31st, there are going to be several uh, site visits, also um, interviews and meetings uh, from our staff. We want to know really in detail about more your organization, how we can work together um, in future opportunities. And final report is due on April 21, uh, 21st of 2023. So we will get all this reminded in your calendar if you are one of those RD to make sure that you have it on your calendars and we will follow up with you accordingly. Now we want to address some of the questions that have been on our QA. And for that, we have Selena Marte who will help us to work on this. Selena? Thank you, Janitzi. Um, our question that we have in the chat is, uh, what if your budget is over, slightly over to the uh, $2 million? Um, would they be still eligible for the application? Um, so Janitzi or Fernando, 
Either of you could answer that question, please. I mean, you know, I, I would definitely still apply and make your case for um, the uh, overage. Um, you know, that is up to the allocations committee um, who will make that decision on wh whether they want to um, fund something that doesn't necessarily fit the criteria, but, you know, make, you know, but um, might still be worth uh, funding. Um, so I would encourage you to still apply and again, make your case for why there's the overage if there's, um, if it's just particular to this year, if, um, you know, years prior, it's, oh, it's been under that 2 million and then this, this year it, it, went, it went over, then um, you could still uh, make a strong case. So I still encourage you to apply. Thank you, Fernando. Um, any other questions that you guys have, uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A section. Um, but at this point, those are the questions that I have so far. So, yeah. Thank you, Selena. There have been some questions in the past uh, where really we have been addressing uh, questions around uh, what it means uh, leading by people of color. And really what we're looking into is that there is a diverse um, equitable organization providing um, equitable services. So for us, it is important that um, a majority of the board of directors, as well as the staff, as well the community that the organization serving is a people of color, consider people of color. Um, with that said, also, we want to make sure that um, even if you think that um, your organizations um, provide services to other areas, in addition to Hartford, yes, you can still apply. The most important thing is that your organization is based or providing currently services within the greater Hartford area. Again, those are one of the requirements. It is very important that um, meets one of those criteria. Um, we also want to make sure that if you have any technical issues um, or need technical assistance uh, with the application form or the platform, Canela Torres is here and she will be more than happy to assist you to troubleshoot any process or any issue. Finally, I want to give the opportunity to uh, Fernando to see if he wants to add additional information before we go into the resources that are available for you. Okay, no, thank you. We are excited and uh, look forward to your applications. I actually have a quick comment. Sorry, Anissi. Um, so Vicky, just going back to your question about the budgets, um, just make sure that initially uh, there's the eligibility quiz that I spoke about earlier. Just there's a question that asks if your operating budget is between 150,000 and 2 million. Just answer yes to that question um, because otherwise you won't be able to access the application. Thank you. Yes, um, the application process at the beginning will ask you some uh, uh, basic questions to see if you're, if you're eligible to apply for this grant. So it is important that you read carefully um, the application, the assessment, and fill out the application fully so there is no um, issue there. But again, Canela will be available. Um, any of us can help you and assist you in this process. Finally, I wanna share with you one of our biggest resources for you at hand. Um, again, uh, we have been talking about the Microsat uh, site, Community of Color Nonprofit Organization Fund website. Um, this uh, website is live and you will get um, information around everything that we just discussed, eligible uh, applica applicants, eligible projects, a funding request opportunity, meet our previous grantees, which I love this one because really they were the first one for this uh, grant uh, last year and they have done incredible work in their community and they have also strengthened their um, institutions. More important, we have been able to establish a network of organizations working together and sharing best practices. In addition, for your consideration, we have the application checklist right here on the homepage, and also you will have access, direct access to apply for the grant. More information, it's about the history that we just share with you, uh, the community briefings that are going to be scheduled here, 
upcoming uh, community briefing are expected uh, to be um, to be hosted um, within the next two weeks and also in, in the month of August uh, for potential workshops, specifically for those who are going to be um, a for those who received the award, uh, we'll be able to see all the workshops here posted, registered. Also, you will have to you will have the opportunity to see previous webinars and online discussions for all the executive directors and senior staff. And finally, uh, we want to share with you one more time the uh, no, the list of consultants from which an organization can bet from. Um, again, we have compiled this document. Uh, from previous um, executive directors and organizations that have used some of the services. Um, in no way, this is an endorsement of services, but really a place to start. Um, you click here and you will be able to see the list, the full list um, of local consultants. And finally, the application sample. I think this is a great tool for you all. So you can print it out and you can do your due diligence to really uh, prep for the application. If we don't have any further questions, I think that at this point, uh, we just wanna say thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We have been delighted by your company and also we wish you the best luck in applying for this grant. Have a great day.